So top to bottom, it seems to have a happy relationship with this. Side to side, it's pretty tight. I could probably make it work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a hair off this and then I'm gonna round over the sides, but the, the top and bottom, I'm actually gonna bevel them so it can tip in. Yeah. Could do it on the saw, but this is just so much more fun. This? Yeah. This is a Japanese uh, block plane. Buy them at Lee Valley. I don't know the, it has a Japanese name, which I do not know. And uh, if you're looking for hand tools, Lee Valley, but uh, the uh, Japanese hand tools are amazing. And I'm not going to bevel it all the way down. I'm going to bevel it within a quarter inch of the bottom there. So it's easy to get in, but then it still has square against square. And clamp wise, these Bessie clamps, I mean, Bessie makes a lot of clamps, but quick grips are useful for like, a, um, I just don't want to poke myself with that. Uh, quick grips are useful like to hold a thing for a second, but they don't even hold a candle to these for strength. Like this is going nowhere. They're new, I haven't heard, they're new to me. And a lot of people would freak out that I'm using hand plane on plywood. But, well the edge, the edge, I mean those are pretty, that's a pretty hard plane. The, the knife on that plane is really, really hard. But uh, the edge grain, the end of the glue is super, super sharp. Right, so if you run it through jointer knives, you end up cutting your jointer knives. But if I were doing, um, if I had one of my other hand planes, it would damage the blade, but this is so hard that it's not damaging it. The guy's name is Rob Husband. Okay. In terms of putting things together, and I, I make mistakes, right? It's not like I'm perfect all the time. Think about your process. So the next thing I need to do is round this over because I'm not as easily going to be able to round over both sides later. That I still have to round over. And I actually... I remember why I waited on the screws because I was going to round over everything before I put the yeah. screws in because the screws will dive in there. So there is a way to get these round. It's just, it's going to be a little more finicky now that I have the screws in. You know, being hard. Yep. Just to make it go in and out easier. So I'm going to give you a different kind of hardware than I have because the hardware I have is bigger, does the exact same thing. I'm going to mount it slightly differently um, because these latches have to go like this. The other one, it could go like on a, around the corner. So I'm going to pre-drill and put these in here. And the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to center this on here. And I'm going to center this on here so you don't always have to put this in the same orientation, if that makes sense. You can...
I like your hardware better. So there's that part of it. So what I'm doing here is I'm finding the center of the front of the box and then I find the front of the center, uh, uh, the front center of the plate on which the jig sits and then I line up those two center lines so that I, uh, I just know that it makes center nicely. So this is a, this is a threaded insert. So I do a hole that is just smaller than the top of this. And it's, this whole thing is tapered, but it's strong enough for the threads. Inside of it's like a nut. It's, it's tapped for a... Now, if I were a smart guy, I would probably do this. So I don't screw up the original. And so these have a, an Allen head on them. Oh, that's so clever. Yeah. You can get these at Home Depot. So this is going in so easily. I'd say that's the right amount of friction. And that's just a judgment call, really. Could probably even go one size smaller because it came out too easily. Here's my actual drill index. I'm still missing stuff. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Happens to be the bit that I'd chosen already. Okay. I forgot a step, but I'm not going to undo it. Um, the step I forgot is to uh, see how right here it's chipped up. Yeah. I'm going to sand that back and it'll be fine. But if I put just a tiny chamfer using a countersink bit, then that doesn't happen. Because the, the actual threaded insert is slightly bigger than the hole, so it's going to compress the stuff on the, uh, on the outside. I just want it below the surface there. These are too long. These are much too long. So um, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn off the camera for a second, but I'm gonna cut them down. So what I didn't get on camera essentially is that I, I cut down those bolts uh, just using a cutoff disc. And instead of you know having a nut on there and wheeling them off, what I do is I take a grinder and I grind a uh, chamfer around the cut end and then the threads uh, will thread normally and it uh, can be quick, quite quick. So these are actually black Robbie, number three Robbie, but the number two Robbie um, that comes with the, the jig works really well. So the other thing I do is I don't, as I think about it, I don't fully tighten them until I get all four of them threaded in. And then I go back and tighten them all. Because if, if it's slightly off, I mean, these actually, 
they worked out really well on this one. So as long as you get one of them in, you should be good. But this is going to go here. And now that this is down, uh, it's dead on. That's perfect. That was exactly what it was. So you're going to have that dead flat. So I'm just going to make this a little smaller so it doesn't go the full width because it doesn't have to. Why not? I'll do it. So it's a size I enjoy. Here's your box. Yeah. My mom said, think of you as a joy forever. Yeah. It's funny because, I mean, it's just at the end of the day, a plywood box. Yeah. But it's got function, right? Yes. Function is a good thing. 